Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pros of Eden. I am Marilyn Acosta. Thank you for joining me. Today's message is going to be centered around the truth. Who is the truth? Who is the way? Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, right? And anytime you are of the way, you are a slave to the truth. And let me tell you something about the truth. It is offensive. The truth doesn't care about your emotions or your feelings. It just comes to bring the light. And when Jesus came with the truth, he said his very own could not receive him, even though he came to him. Because so often the truth, it will offend your carnality, your flesh. This is why we have to remain teachable, moldable, and stop thinking we know all of God's ways. Because the moment you think you understand everything about God. You've missed it. And so many people pray, God, send me someone. Send me a teacher. Send me more understanding. And when he does, you reject the very thing he sends. But there is nothing new under the sun. And this is why he prepares his messengers. Go to these people, even though they will be ever hearing. Some of them won't have ears to receive the truth and there will be those who will turn to righteousness. But nevertheless, you have to make your face like flint and you've got to say and trust that what God has placed inside of you, what he has shown you, you have got to stick to it. Let me tell you the story really quickly why the Lord has placed this in my spirit. You have the, the story of two prophets. There was an older prophet and there was a younger prophet. The younger prophet was working in great miracles. He was going before the king. He was healing. He was helping people to recover in the name of Jesus, right? Hallelujah. He was doing God's work, but God gave him specific instructions. He says, do not eat there. Do not go the same way you came in. You go this particular route. But another man of God who had heard all about the great things and could see all the great things that he was doing came to him and persuaded him because he tried to come to him in on a relational standpoint. Hey, I too am a prophet of God. Hey, I too hear and see visions. Hey, I too. And he was, he was deceived because this so-called, well, he was at one point a prophet of God, but who knows how he may have gone off track in disobedience because here he is and so he's so enamored by this man's gift that he's willing to lie and deceive to get him to come back and have dinner with him that just shows you a little bit of the character of this false prophet well i say false prophet but he, the bible didn't call him a false prophet excuse me of this older prophet and so he says, hey, an angel has come to me and told me that I should feed you, come back with me. And that sounded really good, right? An angel, this is a prophet of God. This person has the same assignment as I do, right? So we must be on the same track. Lies, deception. And because he listened to the man, instead of what God had revealed to him by, through, by and through his instruction, he was eaten alive. On his way back from that dinner, he, a lion was waiting for him who destroyed him. And the report went back to the older prophet and he was like, oh my gosh, he was just so just hurt and he was just broken because it was him that caused this young man to stumble and fall and go against the living God. And I'm sure he knew that there would be a price, a consequence to pay. And he says, hey, bury my bones next to him when I die because I am the reason for his, de his, his destruction. You all, I say this, everything that shines is in gold and every person that calls themselves a prophet of God, they've been doing the work of the Lord forever, but somehow they have missed it. You better understand the instruction and the word of the Lord goes before what any man says. This is why I can come boldly on this channel and say, this is what the Lord placed in my spirit. I'm sorry you didn't get the same report. Maybe you need to go seek God and counsel and prayer, but I have got to stand on the word of God because I will not be like that young prophet that was deceived by the false prophet because he felt, hmm, this one should be wiser. Mm, this one's been where I've been. Mm, this one says he has a word from the Lord. You better trust what God has placed in your spirit. Because one thing that I have learned over the years is what God has shown me, he does perform. And so I don't have any reason 
to doubt what God shows me. I have every reason to stand on the word of God. And if that makes me look foolish once in one season, that's okay, right? Because in another season, God comes to vindicate you. Which brings me to my next point. Resist the urge, you all, to vindicate yourself. Doesn't matter how many people come and they say, oh my goodness, this is foolery, they mock or whatever. These same people, when God proves you and vindicates you, they will be nowhere to found, be found. Many people have the tendency when they don't see something or understand something, they pick up their stone. <laughs> but those same people, when they see it fulfilled, often don't come back just to say, you know what? You were right. Or, you know what? I was wrong. And I apologize. Good luck with that, right? That doesn't tend to happen few, far in between. This is why you've got to know your assignment because people are fickle. One moment it's Hosanna, Hosanna, and the next moment they're ready to crucify you. This is the body of Christ. My God, we have to come together and stand united with one another. But this is the nature of humanity. One moment they love you and one moment they hate you. So baby girl, baby boy, you better know your assignment, stick with it, and make your face like flip because, you know, people are funny. Um, what else do I have on my heart to say the truth? When we stand for the truth, it's offensive. I can't tell you as a witness, there are times when I will come and the Lord will place a word on my uh, heart and I'll tell a word to the African-American community and there's cheers. There's like, yes, I too have heard that. I've seen that. I come and tell a word about Donald Trump, what the Lord showed me, then there's offense in some ways. And then there's uh, approval from other groups. You know, it's just people are funny because depending on what it is that you're bringing, if it speaks to any area of their carnality, they are able to receive, right? But the moment you start speaking hard things, people cannot receive. And this happened to Jesus. The moment he had to do hard teachings, things that might have been so hard to receive in the carnal, in the flesh, you have to have a really strong spirit man to understand the things of the spirit. You have to be filled with the spirit, right? Walking in the spirit to receive spiritual things because the Bible says carnal men cannot receive spiritual things and these were people who were following and being discipled after Christ but when things got hard when they heard a message that they couldn't get with well the Bible says they left they left him and only a few will remain with you too child of God you do not be surprised when you start off with a huge following but only a few follow the true way because the truth is offensive the truth is hard, but nonetheless, let's move on because the Lord has given me this to speak. The key of April, we know is mercy and that God is our strong tower and it is he that we put our trust in. It is God who preserves us. So I want to continue to remind you to walk in that. I, I was reminded as I put my red bracelet on this morning that the Lord keeps showing me it's not by power, might, but it's by my spirit that I preserve you. You are mine, child of God. I am the one that enlarges your steps so that you do not stumble. I got you in every way. And he he literally reminded me of that. And then I was going to read um, Psalms 18 and my page is flipped to Psalm 16. I know some of you, some of you get it. And some of you may be like, wow, that is so mysterious to me. But listen, the angels of the Lord will, will guide you. God will order your steps in all of your ways. The angels of the Lord, the ministering fires, those spirits, they minister to the heirs of salvation. Oh, yes, there's some supernatural things that happen when you walk with God. So think it not strange. So, yes, my page is flipped to Psalm 16. And it says, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee. But to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight, their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. Hallelujah. He's saying, I will not sip from another cup of these false gods. I will not 
dare serve and honor and put my lips to say this God or this this is this idol is on par with my God. Never will I do that because the Lord is my portion. He is the one that maintains my lot. I love that. He is the one that preserves and keeps me at the apple of his eye. No, I will not compare my God to Muhammad. No, I will not compare my God to Buddha. No, I will not compare my God to Allah because he is the true living God and he is my portion. I don't know about you, but you have to understand that in this season, there is a return and there is no way you can have a little bit of this and a little bit of that and call yourself a child of the way. No, you got to be sold out for him. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Listen to his confession, David. The lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. And I told you all this season, God keeps saying, while people are trying to tell you there's a casting down, baby girl, I'm telling you, for you and yours, there's a lifting up. For the people of God who can receive this word, this, there is a lifting up. The, the lines are falling into pleasant places for those who know the times and season that we're in and they hang on to the word and the promises of God that we're in a ruling and reigning season. You can't convince people if it hasn't been placed in their spirit and their heart. You can't go out there trying to get people to receive a word. You just have to declare the word and where and who it's for, it shall go. Hallelujah. Amen. I will bless the Lord who have given me counsel. Come on. God is my counselor. He is the one that gives me the word. I don't come on here delivering my own word. It's by his counsel. It's by his word. It's by his thoughts that he's placed inside of me. God is so good. It's because he has ordered my steps. And I have to share, guys, there is a fire in my bone. I cannot keep these words to myself because they're for the body of Christ. There is a saying that whatever you sh don't share, you know, there are people that are stingy with the things of God. There are people that are stingy with wisdom. They have success and they know a path to take, but they want to hold on to it. The person that holds on to the truth and they don't share it with their brother and sister, watch them lose it because they cannot preserve or keep what they're not willing to share. That is a word for someone that I hope that you can receive. So many people are in competition with this and that, whether it's your career, whether it's a project, a business, that when they have an opportunity to share wisdom, and how they succeeded, they want to keep it to themselves. The people that keep it to themselves, they will only have a limited success because their mindset is warped. There's enough for everyone. Hallelujah. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Now, because God is your strong tower, it doesn't matter who comes up against you. It doesn't matter that the enemies and all these people that want to set traps for you and to see you fail. This is a season where God is preparing the table, where your enemies are going to watch and see you bless, but they're not going to be sitting at the table. They're going to be watching. They're not going to be able to miss the blessing. I don't care where they are or how they try to remove themselves. They're going to hear about you, child of God. They're going to have to see and witness in some form or shape the blessing. And God just keeps reminding me of this in so many ways. He keeps bringing it to my attention that your enemies, they're going to have to pay you tribute. Your enemies, they're going to see you bless. Less. Your enemies are going to need you. He keeps showing me this. And let me tell you, that's a message when people have done others wrong, when people have not really been, you know, good to others, they don't like to hear that message because it's convicting, right? I'm sorry. You have to repent for your wrongdoings. You cannot call yourself a believer and walk in pride and you have an opportunity to make things right, yet in your pride, you refuse to. That is a sin. That is being haughty. That is not being humble. And he goes on to say, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons when you're sleeping, even in the night, even the dark of the night, God is ordering your steps because he abides in the dark, right? Oh, I got such a word for you all about that as well that will truly bless you. Um, and I will deliver that when God gives me permission. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. 
For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. Hallelujah. And thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Our God is a good father. And I just wanted to leave you with that scripture. I intended on reading Psalm 18 with you all, but God had another plan for you. And he wanted me to read Psalm 16. But I do encourage you to go compare Psalm 16 to Psalm 18, because it will bless you. And I want you to decree and declare these words over your life that God is for you. And if God be for me, who can be against me? That the Lord is my strong tower, because these are keys for this season. You're going to have to know, you're going to have to depend and trust on God. When other people are putting their trust in this system and this person and that, you're going to have to know that at the end of the day, God is the ultimate source. God is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's everything, right? So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, you all. Hit that notification bell so that you will not miss any content. I'm always putting a word of wisdom, always sharing something. So hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. I love you all to life. Be encouraged. Walk in the light. Do not walk in offense. I want to remind you that this is a time where the enemy hopes that you get upset with your brother, or that you um, walk in your own understanding and your own knowledge. This is a time where you really have to keep yourself moldable. You got to keep your ear to God, to heaven, what's going on, which means you have to be prayerful, which means you have to be in the secret place, which means that you have to keep yourself teachable. You have to allow the Lord to show you new things because he is doing a new thing and you don't want to miss it. You don't want to be like that old prophet who once was walking with God, who once heard a word from God, but for whatever reason, he fell off, right? And he caused others to fall off as well. The old prophet versus the young prophet. God is doing a new thing, right? I could speak so much about that. The old prophet versus the young prophet. Don't you miss out. <laughs> Follow what the Lord has told you. All right. I love you all. Bye.